Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. A lot going on in the Bay Area. We're going to take a pause from the Niners. Mike and Frank, hang on tight. We'll get to you afterwards. As Shanahan spoke to the press yesterday in the season presser. And as we say, good morning to everybody out there. Niners quarterback situation up in flux, although there's differing opinions on Brock Purdy. Jake Dale Ohm said he was throwing three months after his UCL surgery. But what if Brock Purdy needs full time job? We still have no idea. Is it Trey's time? Trey Lance? We'll get back to that. In the meantime, we got to get the Anthony Slater, our 95 7 game insider. He joins us on the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. And Anthony, hopefully, you stay warm in Minnesota. Number one. Number two. Maybe the air got through the target center yesterday in the second half because the Warriors could have hit a shot after scoring 71 in the first half and have scored 43 the rest of the way. They couldn't hit a shot. They took, couldn't take care of the basketball. And they blow their eighth game in which they had a double-digit lead. I mean, maybe this is just who they are this season, Anthony. I don't know. I'm getting a little frustrated just watching the game yesterday. I, I took that one hard last night. I did, man, after the week I had. Maybe this is just who the Warriors are, Anthony Slater. And good morning to you, by the way. Why are you so invested? Don't be so invested. Don't uh, they're they're five hundred teams. Don't don't have expectations. Man, I, I can't help it. Anthony, man, my emotions getting the best of me right now, man. I, I swear to God, they're up ninety eight to eighty five. I was like, man, the Warriors really have changed. Turn the corner, okay. Now we're starting to get back to championship talk. Trade deadlines coming up. They're rolling. Then I don't know what the hell happened over the last eight minutes of the fourth quarter in the overtime. You said ninety eight eighty five. You remember how the the Wolves made it eighty seven? Uh, turnover, right? It was that play where so Nas Reed bumps into Draymond, tries a bad lefty hook, misses it. They get a stop. Mm-hmm. Draymond gives it to Steph, and he just throws it right back to Nas Reed. Yep. Nas yep. Reed gets the layup. <laughs> <don't> um, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was it was reference post game. Like Steve and Steph both like talk about that turnover is like that kind of flipped everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I mean, how about the one where Steph's dribbling it up and Looney and Draymond are. Just not even looking at him and running up the court, and he just throws it out of bounds. That was unbelievable. Steph has some atrocious turnovers. Just, even the first quarter, first three minutes of the game, they had three right off the rip. Then they had two over the next 21 minutes of the first half. But Steph threw one away like in the first couple minutes of the game. It's like, Steph is just a little too loose with the basketball. That's your leader. That's your guy. It's not the youngsters. It's Steph. Five turnovers yesterday, and you get another four from Draymond. Yeah, I mean, it's just, and it's not a one game thing. I mean, it's not like he's immune to this, even in his best seasons ever. I mean, in the playoffs, in their championships. I mean, we all know the, uh, what, the behind the back where he's throwing the trophy out of bounds. That's like the famous meme. Um, but uh, they've just done it so much this season. And it's a season that I think, I mean, look, they're sitting there at 26 and 25, and, and the bigger picture issues that we talk about so much are the young guys. There's the two timeline plan, the front office's roster build, the trade deadline coming up. What should they do? But the reality is, and Steph admitted it last night, like if they haven't gifted between six and eight games away that they should have won three in the last, what, uh, like 13 days, I believe right. it is, the Boston one, mm-hmm. the Brooklyn one at home, they're mm-hmm. up 17, 12 in the final five minutes. And then last night, like, you know, they're sitting there at, 30 and 21 or something like that right now. And they're third in the West. Like that's just, if, if the veterans had just closed reasonably well in situations that, I mean, they're up four in Charlotte with like a minute right. left. They're up four with seven seconds left in Utah. And they was, I mean, they scored two points in the last five minutes against Miami. Go ahead, Styles. Yeah. No, Anthony, I was just going to say, because you said, you know, the vets and we've been talking about the vets specifically that, that rotation, It's been between seven and nine. How much of this, when you look at when these breakdowns are happening in the fourth quarter, how much of this could just be these guys? We know Steph, you know, his endurance is great, but how much of this could be these guys starting to get a bit tired? I mean, they're not spring chickens and Steph trying to go Dirk to whiskey a couple different times, you know, at the end of the game and go on front rim. How much of that could just be these guys or, you know, they're just getting a little tired. You know, I asked that to Steve Kerr directly last night. He said no. He's like, well, we took yesterday off. But, you know, they're probably not going to play tonight. You know, they haven't released that. That's not official. But, like, you know, they clearly attacked the game as if they wanted to win that one. And, and you know, knowing you got a night off, Steph missed, you know, three, four weeks recently. Uh, he's been refreshed. I mean, Kerr has talked about the type of pop he's had. That wasn't a game yesterday. Like, you know, I've been on long road trips. This That, that was just the second game of, of a – you know, th- three game road trip 
it didn't feel like fatigue should have been a factor last night. It just felt like concentration was. And, yep. you know, obviously if you're tired, like that can lead to, you know, mental fatigue in a sense. But I, I don't think that's the proper excuse yesterday. And, and you know, he did condense the rotation. Um, but, you know, again, like I, Jonathan Kamiga was fine in his bench finish last night. It's not like Anthony Lamb was a major problem. He only clicked seven first half minutes. Jermichael Green's been decent when he's tried him lately. He has not put him in the game the last few. Um, I, I'm still somewhat of a Moses Moody believer. I'm not sitting here ready to, to blame the depth uh, for, for what happened yesterday. You know, Anthony, when you talk about the the length, and we do this every year with the Warriors, you need a big, you you know, we're getting killed on the boards, and then the playoffs come, and Andrew Wiggins becomes a, a rebounding machine. But the player that doesn't play, they always get – kind of the most uh, airtime in, in terms of what the fans want. And who I've been hearing a lot, you know, he's got this frame. It's it's PBJ Patrick Baldwin Jr. He's got this long frame. He can hit the three. Maybe he can help out defensively and rebounding. What ha- has Steve Kerr seen or not seen from Patrick Baldwin Jr.? If, for him to, obviously he's a rookie, but, you know, just, just for everybody out there that listens that's curious, why can't this kid get minutes? Well, why do you think that is? By the way, I thought that that question felt like a James Wiseman setup question. Before you, <laughs> you swerved on me, right there. you know. No, he, he doesn't even come up anymore. Look, and I, you can apply it to both. To be completely honest with you, yeah, you can apply it to about half the roster at this point. <laughs> um, so, but with Baldwin, I mean, he is not physical enough at this stage of his like life or career mm-hmm. to believe he could be like Otto Porter, you know, right? Because Otto right. Porter could hit the three, stretch the floor, but also could bang down low, could start in a Memphis series and, and give you kind of rugged minutes. Like Baldwin, not only, you know, thin, he's, you know, a teenager essentially, uh, but he's had injury issues in his past. I mean, he's just getting over this like pretty horrific ankle injury. He went, oh, you know, two years basically trying to rehabilitate his ankle. Um, it's just, I, like, I've liked little glimpses you've seen. Mostly what I've liked is, like, he can shoot on the move. His catch and shoot looks pure. Like, he looks like a future 42% three-point shooter. Honestly, you know who he reminds me of a little bit? And I wanna, don't want to overdo it here, but that, the guy you'll maybe see tonight, Michael Porter Jr. Mm. Like just a shot. Um, but one of Michael Porter Jr.'s problems is he's not physical defensively at all. He doesn't rebound. He doesn't really defend that much. We'll see. They're trying to work on that with Patrick Baldwin, but it just... At this stage of his NBA life, which is in its infancy, I don't think he's ready to be like, like I said, like an auto porter. Anthony Slater joining us via the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Let me pass some information to you, Slater. You'll love this. And to all the Niner fans out there who are hoping that Vic Fangio would be the defensive coordinator next season, Vic Fangio has decided to take the Dolphins job. He's going to become the Dolphins defensive coordinator and will officially accept the position on the Miami staff after the Super Bowl. So that may make you happy. It may make Niner fans sad, Anthony. You try to come in and steal him, but I think Vic looked at the rosters and he was like, do I go to the team of the future or the team of the past? The team that's <laughs> fading. Wow. The team that doesn't know their quarterback situation. Not Fair. that the Dolphins you know, have uh, nearly a settled QB situation themselves. But good choice by Vic Fangio. Mm. Yeah. We're going to move on. We're going to move on from that and talk some more words. You brought up Michael Porter Jr. and the Denver Nuggets. I like this Denver team, uh, Anthony. I think they they revamped it. Obviously, Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray's back. I think Eric Gordon is a lot better. Aaron Gordon, that is, excuse me, from uh, San Jose and Midi. And Midi of San Jose, I should say. And, then, of course, Contavious Caldwell Pope, Bruce Brown. I, I like this roster a lot. And we're probably not going to see a lot of the core four, right, tonight? They're probably going to low manage and go against the Denver Nuggets A squad while the Warriors bring out their B squad. Yeah, I mean, that seemed to be the indication, the hints last night. Again, they're like, you know, they always do the, well, we'll go back with Rick Celebrini on the plane ride and really discuss workloads and everything. But, you know, again, every time they've um, mapped out this second night of road back-to-backs where they're traveling city to city, uh, and they have tough nights the night before they sit the guys. And that seemed to be the expectation internally last night. You know, maybe it's possible a couple of the veterans play, but uh, I'd expect, you know, the Ty Jerome show again. And you know mm. what? Last time I saw it, I was, in, I was intrigued, right? That Cleveland. Game. Yeah, they uh, did. They did. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily expect a uh, repeat <laughs> of that tonight against Denver, uh, but uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sets up as a mismatch. I believe Vegas, I saw the line, you know, they're expecting the stars to rest at, at 10.5 to, to Denver. Christ. Jesus Yikes. Christ. Denver looks legit, man. And 
Uh, hopefully we can see the Warriors and Nuggets play at full strength like they did in week, uh, what was it, game number two at Chase Center when the Nuggets came to Chase and put up 70 in the first half. Disappointing loss. Slater, you're the man. We'll talk soon, man. We're getting back to the Niners and living this depression world uh, that is 49er football right now, man. That I, I hurt me, man. I can't believe you said that. The team of the past. I, I hey, Slater. hey, I'm just I'm being a hater, but you I know, know. I, know I could tell the Vic Vangio news that stung you, so I might have to tune into your next segment to hear you really, you know, dive into that one. Hey, hey have you ever been to an Eagles game as a visiting fan? No, I wish I've uh, I've I've been right around the stadium, but they've never it's never lined up when I've been in Philly. Be careful, and bring the goons with you. <laughs> let me just say. <laughs> All right, all right, I feel you. All right, Anthony, have a good one, man. Anthony Slater, our 95-70 game insider, joining us via via the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy.